Okay, so let's finish the job and fix the glitch. Um, so what have we done up until this point, right? So we're, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help you develop a series of steps that you can use to debug your code. It's also not just for debugging, it's also for creating, like when you're trying to build things. But typically we'll run across situations where things aren't behaving the way that we expect. And we'd like to have a systematic way of addressing that, right? Um, so what we've done so far is we've cleaned up our code and then we spent some time with the test suites, understanding what they were expecting and what was happening, right? So figuring out what the problem is. So now we have a pretty clear idea of what the problem is, which is that our test suite right here um, is making a request to places on the server. It's expecting that request to succeed, but it's not. In fact, it's returning a 404 error, which is a very specific error code. Um, so actually now we have a pretty large amount of information about the problem already. I'm gonna go start looking at the server code. Now, some of you will see the problem right away. Congratulations, that's great. But imagine that it's like, you know, 4.45 in the morning and you've been up a long time and your eyes are getting a little blurry and you know, you're just trying to finish this up. And you know, I am in no way endorsing or encouraging marathon all night programming sessions. Um, but sometimes you get started and it's just fun and, and you, you work a little bit past the end of your capabilities and you're just trying to like wrap things up. And actually it's usually a really good time to stop because it's a great time to make really silly mistakes. So probably should have gone to bed a few hours ago, but anyway, we didn't. And now we're looking at server.kt. So let's go check it out. Um, all right. So I'm opening this up and, uh, okay. So where am I going to start? So what I'm going to show you how to do in this, uh, video is, a style of a debugging technique that's called printf debugging. That's a name that comes from the C programming language, but we're going to use println statements in Kotlin to investigate our code and get a better sense for why it's not doing what we expect. Now, there are some people that will tell you that this is bad, that you're a bad programmer if you use println debugging. And uh, those people usually don't do a lot of software creation themselves uh, because real developers use this technique all the time. There are other tools that we have available to us and you will find out about them in later courses, but this is not anything to be ashamed of. It's a very commonly used approach to determining what's happening. And what we're essentially going to do is we're gonna use Printlin to acquire more information about our code and try to understand what's happening or not happening. So in some ways, what we do is we use Printlin to, uh, sometimes I, I think of it as examine hypotheses about our code so that we can understand what is, what is not happening. We are expecting something to happen, it's not happening, what is that? And then we start to acquire information about why. Like what is the state of the world and how does it differ from what we were expecting? All right, so I'm looking in the server.kt at the main routing tree. And one of the things I want to point out is down here, if I just did a control F for 404, I would find that the 404 response is coming at the bottom of this when. So when, like if, has a fall through. And what happens is if the when doesn't match any of these other statements, it'll enter this else statement. So what's happening here, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'll put uh, some blocks around the else. Uh, Printlin, I'll say, uh, throwing, uh, or say returning, it's not really a throw, returning 404. Um, now when I start adding print statements to something, I usually like to put a print statement somewhere than I expect. Now I don't know if we're actually getting down here or not. I think we are because we're seeing the 404 from the test, but I usually like to put a print statement somewhere that I think will execute so that I can confirm that print is working. Sometimes the print output is being hidden or something like that. So I'm gonna put uh, println uh, entering route dispatch tree. Um, okay, and I'm gonna rerun the test. Uh, so now I expect to see that println from entering the dispatch tree displayed. And sure enough, I see entering route dispatch tree. And then I also see this uh, returning 404. So like I suspected, I am entering this um, this else block in the when, which indicates that there's a there's a route that's being requested that's not matching any of these conditions. So that actually has actually a lot of information about what's going wrong. I'm going to take out this print from my test. Um, and for many of you, this is probably enough to solve the puzzle. Um, but let's keep investigating. So one thing that I'm going to hypothesize is that I am not 
entering get places. Now, it's possible get places is broken, right? Uh, it's possible that this is uh, this is broken, but I'm gonna hype. Here's my hypothesis. Let's put a print statement in, um, and we'll say uh, running get places. Uh, boom, boom. I'm gonna run this, and sure enough, if I look here in the output, I don't see that. Now, again, it's possible that get places is broken. It's possible that I made some change to get places, and that broke. The you know that 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 method is returning a 404. Now I could go look at it and see that it's not, but but this is but if it was more complicated, I might not be sure, right? So this is a way. What we're doing is we're examining these hypotheses. So so my original hypothesis was I'm not entering this block because I'm falling into this 404. So now what I'm going to try to do is figure out why am I not entering this block, right? Why isn't this matching? There are two things that I'm testing here. I'm testing the path to see if it's equal to place, and I'm testing uh, the method. And I'm gonna put these up here in my print statement so that I can see what happens when I enter the route dispatch tree. Run this again. We're zeroing in on what the problem is. Uh, and now you'll see, okay, so I'm entering route dispatch tree for reset. Um, now this happens before testing starts, and that reset method is used to put the server into a consistent state. Um, then it looks like I enter the route dispatch tree for the route places and the method get. And so now I can solve the puzzle because what I see is that the path here is matching on place, but the test suite is requesting places. And like everything else in computer science, these small errors do matter and that missing S is causing us to fall out of the when statement into the else and return the 404. So now I understand uh, exactly what's going wrong. Now, when you're working on a real project, at this point, there is this question of what's right, right? Now, and if you had just come into the situation with a lot of not prior knowledge, one thing you might, you know, you might need to go talk to somebody else and be like, okay, well, the test suite's checking places, the route tree uses place, what's right? Um, now, when you're working with our code, the test suites are always right. Right. They establish what's right. The other thing I could do is like go look at the client code, for example, and you'll see that the client is also requesting places. So places is, in fact, in this case, correct. Um, and so now let's make this change and see if the test works. And I'm hoping it does. And it does. And you'll see now that I enter, I'm running get places prints because I entered this block and I don't see this 404 being returned. Cool, okay, so this is really great. Um, now, at this point, and I've done this myself a lot, there's this temptation to be like, okay, clean everything up, rip out all the print statements, but no, 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 remember, we had this other hypothesis that this was causing the failures in the other tests. So let's run the whole test suite first. We're using our usual workflow, zero and on one test, get it to work, then kind of bump out a level and let's run the whole test suite for MP0 and make sure that everything is working again. If everything has started to work, then, and it has, then we can start dropping some of these uh, these print statements, right? We'll kind of basically go back. I don't need uh, blo uh, braces around that because it's just one statement. Here's my other print statement. Here's my other print statement. And again, I don't need braces around this. Same thing, uh, reformat, and we're good. Okay, so what is our... You know, so, so now I'll rerun the test suite just to confirm that I've eliminated any spurious output here and it looks like I did and I've been able to fix the bug. So let's go all the way back to the top and review. Have a problem, something not working the way that we thought, first step is clean up the code. You know, reformat it, you know, get it looking correct and move any large chunks of commented out code or unused code out of the way so we can focus on the code that is being executed. Step two or step one, which was super critical, was to understand what's going wrong. Um, and one thing I wanna point out is that when we work with you, we're gonna be expecting you to, to, to have completed these steps now when we uh, aid you in your work on the project. Um, and, you know, and particularly like this last step, right? Well, first of all, you know, if you come and ask for help and you don't know what's wrong, we're gonna tell you to figure out what's wrong because we really can't help you if we don't know what's wrong either. Adding instrumentation to the code, which is what we were just doing, is also super important. And we'll expect you to have done a bit of that when you come for help because that information is also really useful to staff 
or anyone who's trying to help you if you have a little bit of information about what's happening. Now, when you start off with printf style debugging, it's normal to um, sort of go overboard a little bit because you're not exactly sure what you're looking for. And so you end up putting print statements in a lot of places and, and stuff like that. And that's okay. Like I've been there, I've done that. Um, it's fine. You usually eventually you'll get to the end and you'll feel a big sigh of relief, but then you have like all these print statements that you have to go back and take care of. Um, over time, what will happen is you'll get better at figuring out where to put the print statements. Like your intuition will develop and you'll just gain more experience and you know your sort of precognition about what might be happening or what might be going wrong gets stronger. And so you start to be able to, to put print statements in the right spots, um, sort of the smallest number that you really need to solve the problem, right? But don't worry at the beginning if you end up putting in a lot, that's okay, they're not gonna hurt anything, right? You can always comment them out. Um, there are like, for example, we could have used um, Android logging here, right? Just another option. So there are other ways to, well, actually we, you shouldn't use Android logging in, in the server.kt, uh, but we could use Android logging in other places, right? And that's just a standard part of the Android logging system. And one of the reasons why the Android logging platform exists is because this style of debugging is really common and very useful. So, okay. These are uh, steps that will really actually get you a long way towards your goal. And the ultimate goal here is to empower you to fix these problems yourself. We are trying to teach you how to fish. Um, you know, you always won't have uh, people available to help you with stuff like this all the time. And when you learn how to fix these problems and make forward progress, it's super empowering because you realize you can build anything, you can create anything, any problem that you might encounter, you start to develop a high degree of confidence that, hey, I can get that to work. And that's super exciting, right? That'll make you feel uh, really good about yourself and really confident when you approach problems and create things that other people are going to use, which is you know, kind of what we're all trying to accomplish here. So good luck um, and we'll be there to help when you need it.